Hello everybody. As you can see, I am in Glastonbury. I am sitting at the beginning of the labyrinth that surrounds the tour. It is a tree labyrinth, so you can look that up. It might be called the Tintagel Labyrinth, but I am unsure of that. And it is in the shape of a tree. It is possible to walk it. It takes a couple of days. Can you see those ridges? And then there's another one there. Those ridges, people walk around and it takes a couple of days. Like that. So this is where I am sitting. And we were lucky to come up here very early yesterday morning. We got up at four o'clock and we did get to see a sunrise. I did post a couple of pictures. Somebody I was up here sky clad and I could not record very much because he was shouting, love and light, love and light. And he was right in the middle of that tower lying down, stark, sky-clad as we call it, shouting at the top of his voice, bless him. Uh, so I didn't do much recording, but we did get to see a sunrise. So here I am today. So let's begin. I'm unsure what this healing is going to be. It might just be me talking and healing. Maybe about a bit of the myth and legend around here. So I'd like you just to take a breath in from the beautiful earth and mound of the tour and breathe out, relaxing further and further. Now take another breath in from the air element and breathe out any worries. Take a breath in from the beautiful two wells, the holy springs, the white and red springs. And breathe out any sadness or emotions into that water. And finally, take a breath in from the sun above you, that fire element that rules our sky. And breathe out your angers and your frustrations. And then settle your breathing down into its natural rhythm. Imagine roots growing out of your shoulders and down past your hips and your knees through your feet and into the ground below you. It pushes down through the soil and the rock. And I'm unsure of the name of this rock, but it is a slightly different rock to the other hills that are around here. Root them into any crystals and minerals. There is a crystal that comes from Somerset, which I will show in future videos. It's a kind of peachy color with all swirls. Root into that peachy, creamy stone. And take another breath in and release that breath out. And then imagine a beautiful beam of light emerging from the upper levels, from the heavens, if you wish to call them that, and surrounding you within that layer of love and light and protection. And call in your guides, angels, and helpers. 
I'm going to call in my spirit guides, my druid, who is called Marvin, which is the Welsh pronunciation of Merlin. But he is not the Merlin, he tells me. The Merlin was the chief advisor. The other Merlins were advisors to other chieftains and men in charge. So it was a title of reverence given to a learned druid. Marvin, Saint Michael the Archangel, whose tower stands on the hill. We ask you to hold the space for us as we do some healing. We also invite the Magdalena energies, Mary Magdalene, very popular around the here. And we ask Joseph of Arimathea to come and grace us with his presence. Joseph of Arimathea is said to have planted the holy thorn, which is a hawthorn tree. And many of the descendants of those trees are in these parts. And I came across some oil in the shop Star Child. Now I am unsure if they mail abroad, but this is holy thorn. It smells different to the hawthorn. And it is a lot more, how shall we say, syrupy. A very dark oil. Now I'm balancing the tripod with my foot so it may wobble. But breathe that scent in. It almost smells a little bit of mint and myrrh. So just start to relax your body as I draw the Oem symbols of yew tree Eoho, master symbol, into my hands for extra power. Eoho. Roish. Roish, which is elder, another master symbol. And then Hwaith. For inspiration and activation. Imagine breathing in this myrrh and mint smell of the holy thorn. Breathe it down deep into the pit, almost to your solar plexus, and release. And whilst I start teasing some of this energy, I'd like you to set your intentions. What is it you would like for this healing? It is not anything in specific that I am focusing on. I'm just bringing you the energies of this beautiful place, which are very strong. We ask for peace, healing, tranquility and spirituality connection so that all of us can live a better life with the qualities of the Knights of the Round Table. Charity, clarity, grace, hope, love. It's clear from around your head. Hello, Mr. Crow. Clearing that fuzz out. And we ask for inspiration from the Marvin, from the Merlin. If 
you are trying to develop your psychic abilities. May I ask him for clarity. Breathe in grace and love and light, positiveness, and breathe out doubt. So a bit of the folklore and the legend. In some myth and legend, originally there was a stone circle on the top, but we are unsure if that is true. And it is said that the priestesses of Avalon had their We'll call it a convent, or their communes, or their school. Somewhere on one of these little hills surrounding, this is the most prominent hill, and there are lots of hills of Glastonbury. Over there is the hill where Joseph of Arimathea planted his holy thorn. He bashed his staff into the ground, and it is said the thorn sprouted. So the very early Christians, it is said, came here fleeing persecution after Christ's death. And it is said that they brought the chalice, the grail, the graal. It is said that the priestesses and the druids of Avalon had their communes on the hill at the foot and they would walk up to the spring and gaze into the pool for their visions. And they were led by the Lady of the Lake the chief priestess called Vivienne. And later, Morgan Le Fay, a name that you may have heard, who had many trials and tribulations. She loved Lancelot, and he loved Guinevere. So there are some very good historical novels, The Mists of Avalon, which I was gifted by a lovely friend of mine in the US. It is a book I had always heard the elder druids of my groves talking about, but I've only just read it. And there are three novels within that. And one of them starts pre-Roman, through Roman times. And carries on the Arthurian legends. Just going to start working on your throat. I'm going to do some clearing first before I properly channel the energy of this place. Myself and my friend Lorraine did a little bit of healing here yesterday and it was so strong up there on the top that we were swaying as we worked together. So it is said that this church, the remains of it, which is the St. Michael Tower, is a portal. If you stand in the very middle of it and look up, you can see the sky and it is a perfect square, orientated to the directions. And as the Romans left, then Christianity started to take over. 
it became the dominant religion under the Emperor Constantine. I think they left around 300 AD. And then the Celts who held this place and much of England had to fight the Saxons, the Jutes and the Angles who all came across the sea from Scandinavia, the Netherlands, maybe France, for fertile lands of England. And Arthur was said to be a Romano Celt. So he was a native of the Pendragon line, begot by a Rus, really. Glamour, as they call it, when people can shapeshift or take on the face. You may have seen that. Sometimes it happens to myself. My guide's face shows through. Not very often, but it does happen. But he was said, Utha, Arthur's father, to have been disguised by Merlin and Vivian, who hatched a plan to keep the Pendragon line and the old religions alive. And then the Arthur was born. And Arthur was unique because he united the tribe. Let's go down to the heart centre, which Glastonbury is said to be. I'm going to use Birch, Beth. Glastonbury is said to be the heart chakra of the world. And it truly is a very special place. I have bought nothing but pink and green crystals since I have been here without setting for out to get those colours. There are many, shall we say, bohemian types wandering around the sky card gentleman yesterday. I really could have worn a fairy outfit all day and not looked out of place. I imagine it is maybe like Salem, very alternative, very cosmic, and very beautiful. So perhaps as you are sitting, you can think now of what needs healing in your heart. Don't follow any upsetting emotions, just register. I don't want to feel scared. I don't want to feel put down. I want to be happy, okay? Just things like that. And we're just gonna clear that heaviness. Let me get a good hard pull. And I'm blowing it into these thistles that I'm sitting amongst. Let's reach behind you. So all those things that have gone. Now going down to the, sacral, uh, the solar plexus. Okay, Beth. The tiredness, the lethargy, the despair with life and humanity.
especially for those in winter at the moment. Because in the summer we all have a little bit more energy, don't we? A little bit more get up and go. Breathe in the holy thorn to nurture you. Any pain at your waist and your ribs. In fact, if you have pain anywhere in your body at the moment, Take a breath in and breathe out and relax. Okay. Now emotional turmoil of the sacral. I'm going to draw willow sail. Actually, I just drew into you reed. So will you use reed for a bit? Because I have been around the well. So reed bending like these, like a reed would bend in the wind. The willow who cries our tears for us, who brings joy and laughter, who aids in psychic abilities and dream work. Lots of willows around here because lots of water. And then your root. So any worries about your bills, your home, your survival, we remove them and place them into this sacred soil for Mother Earth to draw the chi down and transmute and change in her own good time that negative energy into positive energy. The remains of that church up there are after earthquakes. We do get them every now and then in England, not big ones, not, not big ones. But a shift happens. And that church of St. Michael, that tower is all that stands. So it has strong foundations, that church that tower and I want you now just to think of your own foundations picture your roots becoming thicker and thicker giving you a good foundation and now I'm going to start channeling the landscape around this hill sending that to you I'm going to start at your crown, channeling now that energy of Glastonbury Tour of the heart center. Bringing that love, that light into you from Saint Michael the Archangel, whom I believe to be Apollo, because many Saint Michael churches are on the Apollo line. We're on the St. Michael ley line here. You may be able to feel that magnetism and that light 
and down into you. Put my hands right in the middle of the screen. There we are. And imagine that energy center on the top of the head, the crown. Imagine it as a white lotus. Water lily. Pushes up through all of the mud of the bottom of the lake. And then a pure, clean flower opens with no dirt on it at all. A thousand petals. And in the middle is a great big Maharaja diamond. And I'm just going to ask your guides, just angels, just to dust it off. Wipe away that doubt of your spirituality. This is your connection. And just imagine you're here, perhaps walking behind me completely free, shaking your shoulders. And the light of your higher self, your guides, your angels, your creator, the divine omnipresent, as I call it, divine light down through your crown it travels down your forehead into your third eye down to your throat your heart your solar your sacral and your base and it exits out of your root chakra and your feet and travels down to the energy center below So it has already come through the chakras above you before it enters your crown and now it travels out to the earth star and the earth gateway. So you are connected to the heavens and the ancestors. Pues. The honeysuckle is also out in abundance, so I'm going to draw that into you. It is an oem, it is a master symbol. Wun. It's one of the later oem. Five more were added that look different from the tally mark ones. Wun. This is the air element. The hawthorn was the fire. And honeysuckle is a tenacious plant. When you plant it somewhere, you can very rarely get it out and it literally goes mad. And it also weaves in and out of other plants. So it finds ways, a bit like ivy, quartz, which we'll also draw into you now gourd to find your pathway. You might have a few full starts, much like a labyrinth, a hedged labyrinth in some of the stately homes in the UK and across Europe. You can also bring ivy to bring things towards you, a bit like binding but More pleasant, shall we say. So let's do a little bit of path working now. Just imagine that you are here with me and you're going to start walking this first level of the labyrinth. We are at the foot of the steep part. Mm -hmm. You're on a pilgrimage to your better self. 
putting one step in front of the other, which is all that any of us can ever do. Got finding that pathway. Duya oak for the strength to carry on every day. The strength to support the others who rely on you. Elderly parents, children, your team members. An oak tree supports many life forms. And the ivy is a late source of nectar. It comes out almost at the end of autumn. So it just keeps those insects going a little bit longer. Keep walking that path, your path. But don't worry if you veer off it a little bit. You just might be taking a detour and learning a few more things along the way. The air is so fresh here. But this is said to be a land of mists. A couple of thousand years ago, the flat, low levels of the Somerset levels were said to be reed beds. And the only people who knew the way were the locals. And they found little walkways, the remnants of wood walkways. And when the priestesses arrived at the waters around, they would summon the barge to get them. Rowed by the little people, the blue people, whether they were actually blue or whether they were painted with woad and woad is a plant if you've watched Braveheart with the blue war paint on their faces that is woad and this barge would come and collect them and the mists would part but not everyone knew how to do this Some of the priests did also have a foot in the pagan world, Celtic Christian and a foot in the Christian world. And we still have the Celtic Christian church today. And I suppose those are more of my leanings now. It is also said that people got lost in those waterways because the mists enveloped them and nothing was as it seemed. Breathe in. Breathe in and then breathe out, releasing. So I'm just looking at the trees around. About a hundred yards away are two willows. There is a tree of heaven. There is a, a handful of oak trees. And of course the hawthorn which is smaller in between. So we are surrounded. A tree of heaven looks similar to an ash, but it is different and it is not an owen. 
So we have all of these trees at the foot of the tour. And then this beautiful mound of rock. I'm going to draw in a tree called the older tree, which are also around here, which I don't use very often. An older is a tree of learning, and I'm going to put that into your third eye, your yin tang point. I haven't used the Chinese references because a lot of people don't really understand them. I know you understand chakras more, so we're pushing that in for learning. I'm just going to channel that tree and it has big, big leaves in that shape, slightly serrated edges, nice big green leaves, probably about that big. And it will grow where there is much water as well. your throat. I need a tree for communication. Actually, we will use the yew tree because the throat chakra can take us back in time and forward in time. And the yew tree, which is also around here, eoho, 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 and eoho, is a distant healing tree. Many of them in the UK are about 2,000 years old. So they can go back down the timelines, the vertical timelines of bloodline, and also across the horizontal timeline of the land that we live on. It is also a tree whose bark is used, specifically the Pacific yew, I believe, in cancer treatments. It is toxic, but it does help that. You cannot ingest it, especially the pips, but you can make a tart out of the berries, but the wood is toxic. And I just want to say a word on these therapies. Many people saying, I want to do it naturally, I want to do it naturally. Well, sometimes we have to fight poison with poison. And your family would probably worry a little bit less about you if you decided to take that poison. Okay? Every medicine has its place. And they have done tests. People who have the medicine, pharma, as well as the chi, the energy healing, tend to fare better. I could never and I would never advise people not to listen to their doctors. If you need a second opinion, get one. But without it, even until earlier this century, even now in places in the world, many of us would not have lived past 40. I indeed, had I not listened to a doctor once, I would have died about 32. So we get a longer chance at making our way on this planet because of modern medicine. Yes, it has side effects. Yes, it marks things, but you can do other research and have these complementary therapies. And that is the key word, complementary. Whilst we're talking about that, we will ask the guides, angels, helpers, and the chi to find its way to the imbalances 
to perhaps alert you to that complementary medicine that will help. Whether it be relaxation, aromatherapy, reflexology, cranial, or all these supplements. We ask Ivy to help you find the way as you walk your path around your labyrinth of life. Twisting, turning, changing with every hour, every day. And we get to the middle of the tree bit and we have a breathe. So now you're on top, seeing as far as the eye can see to the mendip. Down to Yeovil, down to the barrowlands of the Henges, you're on top of the world, just imagine now you're standing in that tower and you look up, gather your chi in as I did yesterday when I did my Tai Chi and bring down that to you, into you again. Spread like a star, like the Vitruvian man connecting to the elements of earth, air, fire, water and ether. All the five Chinese elements if you prefer and I'm not sure if the fifth one is metal or wood. I cannot remember my notes. Breathe in and release and breathe out and know that you are balancing, you are recalibrating. Listen to the ravens, the intelligence of those birds. In many cultures, even in Greek myth, Raven, it is said in Greek myth, was originally white. And he brought distressing news to one of the gods, Apollo or Zeus, I can't remember. That whoever the sweetheart was at the time was unfaithful. And because of that bad news, the messenger, the white raven, was turned to black. We have the Morrigan in Ireland with her ravens. I don't personally work with her, but I know many do. And we have Woden or Odin's ravens, Fortin Merrimary, Hugin and Moonen, who he would send out each day to watch and listen and bring news back. Ravens, crows, the corvids, it is said recognize faces I know people who feed them every day. And they tell their friends, apparently, there's a lady who feeds us. Come this morning, come on. And people do teach them to mimic and talk. I think the sun is starting. The clouds are shifting and the sun is going to come through. Okay, going down to this heart center now. Just felt mine swell. So I'm going to channel this holy thorn. So the hawthorn, it has tiny leaves, which are, they're like an oak. They kind of go like that. And this holy thorn is particularly different because it flowers in winter. And a sprig is picked and sent up to the monarch for their Christmas day dinner to put on the table. That is tradition.
So it is said to flower a couple of times a year probably and winter is one of them. And that is the difference between the holy thorn and hawthorn. And I'm feeling the energy of Joseph of Arimathea now, who it is thought possibly brought Jesus here in those missing 12 years. Joseph of Arimathea was a tradesman, a merchant. And in Cornwall, which is south of me, the peninsula at the end of the UK, there were tin mines. And tin was a very precious commodity. So it is thought he invested and maybe came to see what he was investing in and brought the boy Jesus with him who possibly learnt from the Druids. Of course, everything is conjecture. This is 1,500 years ago, possibly longer. And myth and legend gets woven and weaved and embellished. People like me tell the tales. We leave bits out by mistake. Other people fill them in. Stories change and morph with peoples and with times. And then it is said that Arimathea came back with some of the disciples, fleeing the persecution of the Romans and the Christians. The disciples spread across the Middle East and the, and the Mediterranean bringing those stories, letters to the Corinthians, the Acts of the Apostles, those later books that were included. There may even be other cultures whose letters I left out. It is also thought some of the Irish goddesses and gods came here very close to Ireland here across the Celtic Sea from us so Bridget or Bride healing goddess of poetry fire and water of blacksmithing which was a magical art of alchemy and of course with the travellers other languages would have come in, the Greeks, the Latin, maybe even the Mesopotamian. The Druids did not write things down. It was the later Christians who wrote things down. And thank goodness they did, or we wouldn't know. We wouldn't have had the name Arthur written somewhere. A lot of these names would have been missed in folklore. I'm sensing I need to draw an oceanic Reiki symbol of the true heart cockle. Putting that in now. Wishing you all of the love the laughter and the light in this world and the next. And if you needed it in a past life, I send it back to that with the yew tree, with the ear haw. Breathe out. Look at the pink and the green of my top, the heart chakra colors, the green of the beautiful ground around me, a healing color, pink for the higher heart, green for the lower heart, but they kind of merge into one, don't they? They merge. I'm going to move around to the sides of you and I want you all just to 
put your hands on your heart and I'm going to send that energy actually through your hands. Stability, love, compatibility. Here's the sun, the light of Apollo. The light of our world. The Rosaline Church keeps coming into my mind and that is in Scotland, I believe, and it is an ornately carved church, but I think one of the major ley lines goes through it. So I think that might be a future journey for us to explore, but I'm sending whatever images have been imprinted into my mind for that now. And you could Google that and have a look at the ornateness and the carvings and the care that has been taken with that. So perhaps care for yourself, care for your heart, care for others. And feel whole. Feel the wholeness of this place which I send. The beauty of Avalon of Glastonbury. Let's seal that with gold. Let's go up to the throat and seal that with gold. And the third eye, seal that with gold. And the crown. Now I'm going to go down the back of the third eye, sealing the back with gold. Sealing the back of the throat with gold and the heart with gold. Keep walking your labyrinth. I'm going to keep reminding you as I now move to your solar plexus and I'm channeling these oak trees here that I'm looking upon. The Druia. The Druia. Oak of the Druids. Phineas Parham. Oldest of wood. Druia. Druia. Oak of the Druids, steadfast and strong and sheltering. My rhyme didn't quite match at the end, so please forgive me. Breathe in as the sun warms us. See a little bit, a little bit of cloud is coming in behind, so we might have drizzle. But it is warming up. You can hear the insects. And I thank you so much for joining me at this special time. I do so enjoy bringing these healings to you. And as that light shines, I want you to feel and sense your aura or imagine it if you can't feel things. Imagine your aura now with all of those colours swirling around you and if there are any cloudy bits, I'm going to channel this light in now. To disintegrate it, we ask Saint Germain and the angels of the violet fire and the violet flame to come in. We call upon Archangel Zadkiel to transmute. He is the angel of the violet flame. Can hear a cricket. Can I see it? So that darkness, wherever it is, is if you've got maybe shoulder ache, there might be a, a darkness around there. Let's disintegrate it. Anything else, any health issues, disintegrate that chi. And we ask the yin and yang energies, the balance to come in. We ask the Reiki to clear your meridians so that the energy can flow up and down and around your body. Unencumbered. Heal. 
Look at that light there. Perfect. Seal that solar plexus with gold, the front and the back. Sun is above now. And bring that warmth now into your sacral. Imagine the healing waters of Avalon, the red well and the white well, two streams of water from different sources, bringing you the healing properties, the minerals, and the love of this place, the love of your mother, of Gaia. Sorry, I keep looking at these birds that are flying. I'm hoping to see a hawk or a, a buzzard or a kite. Feel those cold waters of your abdomen turn warm as the sun radiates its light down or his light down. It's gonna bounce that energy between your hips. Okay, now I'm going to rotate it into an infinity symbol to rush around the hip joints like that, swaying like a Tai Chi person who moves in figures of eight. Imagine that golden light now, crisscrossing all of those organs, the veins, the meridians, within your abdomen, your bowl. And this, slightly above the sacral, is the lower dantian that the Chinese store their energy in. That is traditionally what we use in Celtic Reiki, but I'm working with chakras today. Breathe in and breathe out. Sealing with gold. Sealing with gold. And now going to place a hand on your shoulder, your root, your mulhadara, the one facing the earth underneath you. I'm going to use the Scots pine, the Aaron, a fir tree or a Scots pine or a Douglas fir in America, that would be your closest tree to a Scots pine. Think of how thick those trees are. Think of how big those fir cones are, how many seeds they hold of potential growth. That is you. You have many seeds of potential growth. In fact, I can't see any dandelions around me. Imagine that fir cone opening, which looks like the pineal gland. I might have said it right for once. Opening up. And the wind blowing all those seeds away. To create their own little trees, their own little projects, their own little money spinners for abundance. And we protect that with the Rowan, sorry, wrong sim symbol, the Rowan, Ruish. protecting your creativity, be careful who you tell, <laughs> of your plans, keep things to your chest a little bit, and let that potential start to form, Make your short-term plans and your long-term plans. As I seal that with gold. <sighs> so now we will close down at a 
full body healing for an hour at this beautiful, beautiful location. I'm so glad I can bring these videos to people all around our beautiful, sweet, green earth. And that is you. And as long as people want to watch, I will make these. They might not always be perfect, but they will be done with love in my heart to you. So I want you to think of these willows and these oaks, these fir trees and the holy thorn. And I want you to reaffirm your roots out of your shoulders for extra rooting. And down past your hips and knees, out of your mulhadara, out of your feet out of your hips. If you do not resonate with the roots, imagine yourself sitting on a giant boulder of crystal, perhaps red jasper or bloodstone. Feel that solidity. Imagine that tower structure above me on the hill, keeping you balanced like that Vitruvian man who looks very steady as he stands. Imagine him in a, a hoop. Cartwheeling is the hoop. He wouldn't move a muscle. We do see people doing that, don't we? And that is you. You are stable. You are secure. You are loved. You are loved by your angels. You are loved by your guides. And you are loved by your ancestors. Even if the recent ones you did not resonate with, the ones further down the line, they're cheering for you. And if you don't know your ancestors, they know you. And if you are adopted, you haven't just got two streams of a family or a clan, you have four, you have your adopted clan as well. So I think actually you may be a little bit luckier in the spirituality and ancestry world. Okay, I think I've gabbled on for longer than necessary. I want you to put your hands into mine now. I'm going to enclose mine around yours, sending my palm energy in with all of the love from this heart chakra of our beautiful, sweet, green earth. With all of the hope, with the clarity of your guides and your higher self, and the collective ancestry love. Take a breath in, breathe out, and I will see you next time from a different place in Avalon. Bye bye to you all and much love.